exciting. All right, guys, welcome, welcome, one and all to another episode of Fire Builders Live. My name is Josh Corporal. We are streaming, as always, from Key West, Florida, live. And guess who we have on the show today? Marusha Murphy. Welcome to Fire Builders Live. How are you? It's good to see you. It's great to see you. I'm uh, I'm so appreciative of the time. Of course, we got planes flying overhead. Why? It wouldn't be any different, you know? Like, that's what Key West is all about. It's just about adapting. Uh, and, uh, no, it's so great to have you here because I know how busy you are. And uh, I'm just super appreciative that you're taking the time. So, welcome to the show. Um, for those of you that have not seen Fire Builders Live ever before, what the hell? Uh, I'm going to tell you, let me tell you a little bit about what this show is all about and how it works. Basically, we stream live Monday through Saturday, six days a week with all of these amazing guests. Right, guys, we well basically, yep, she's playing it. It's working. <laughs> like, at least it's coming through. Sorry. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> No, we uh, we stream live and we take we bring these experts in. We break down these big goals into small steps, things that you can do right. every day to succeed, to achieve things, to consistently improve yourself. And this this episode is no different. In fact, listen to this. Um, you know, we are all building our own sort of little empires online, especially now. And to do that, you really do need to know how to build and create and maintain a culture. And that is why I'm so excited to have Marusha on the show. Not only is she the voice and creator of the coffee company Perky Perky, which we can go into in a little bit, which is amazing coffee, by the way, you should check that out. But she, for the last 20 years, has been teaching people how to expand their audience engagement, how to increase their revenue with a culture that loves them, right? How to create these brand campaigns for women, primarily for women owned businesses and women focused companies. You know, she, she boasts that honestly, within a five year time frame, she has created over 1000 online programs and courses, which is honestly just super impressive in itself. Um, you know, done things like brought in two and a half million dollars in a single like community building campaign, taking these hyper localized niche markets and blowing them up, not like, you know, two or three times, but we're talking like hundreds of times to really build and maintain that culture. Because honestly, it's all about connection, understanding people, what grabs and holds their attention and make them feel like they're part of something bigger. And that is why I wanted to have Marusha on the show. So Marusha, Welcome again to Fire Builders Live. Oh my gosh, Josh. Thank you so much. It has been so much fun to watch Fire Builders Live in its first season. So to be asked to be on the show, I'm like literally like, oh my gosh, I get to be here. Like this is so lucky for me. <laughs> How's it feel? Was it is it is it like you imagined it's gonna be, or is it like uh Yes, everything and more? It's amazing. Yes. Well, uh, I'm so happy to have you here. We have spoken quite a bit. Uh I mean, in fact, we met, we met at Ryan Lee's, I think it was his Freedom Fest uh, event. Is that right? It so. was, yeah. Our dear friend, Brooke Emery was like, you guys have to meet each other. And then we went out um, that night for dinner and drinks. And we were just like, just like, this is amazing. Why haven't we known each other more than right now? You know? That's right. That's it's, right. I feel very, very honored that Brooke connected us to one another. Same. Um, I love what you're doing. So it's a lot of fun to, to meet you or to have met you in person. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, like, you know, Fire Builders Live, this whole thing. I mean, I am going to take what you say today and directly apply it <laughs> because, because, you know, we're all trying to build communities. I'm no different. This whole show, um, the vibe, the community aspect of it is very real and very tangible. And, and you know, there's a fine line, I feel, between between building a community and almost not building like a real cult, like a religious cult, but like, you know, people that have the fervor of a cult of, you know, something that they truly, truly believe in. And that's what you specialize in. Yeah. You know, um, I have a really good friend, uh, Jesse Elder. I don't know if you know who Jesse is. He actually uses this term. And I thought when I heard it about, you know, four or five years ago, I was like, oh my gosh. And the term is ethical cult building. <laughs> yes. Think of, like you think about it and you think, you know, when you think about what communities are and what they can actually do, the truth is everything that we do as humans are based on community. And I think that's why for us, like we have got to get this right 
if we want to continue to um, differentiate ourselves between, you know, from one product to another, let's say your product based company that, you know, I, I'm in the coffee space, right? Like how many coffee companies are there out there? So like we had to figure out like, how do we create a connection between uh, the product or a program and the end user? Like what really makes the impact? Mm -hmm. Right. And and when I heard Jesse once say, you know, ethical cult building, I kind of was like, it gave me goosebumps, not in a good way, because I don't, obviously I'm not here to create cults. Right, right. But the idea uh, is that you're creating this, these movements and these these experiences where people are so, they're part of their identity becomes what it is that they're a part of. Yes. That created, right. That is an art and a science. You know, there's a lot of psychology that goes into that. But the truth of the matter is, it's the, if you can think about our own lives individually, we each have our own ethical cults, if you will, that we can't, we would never want to let go of. Mm -hmm. We would never want to let go of certain communities. I would say my family is one of those communities, not just like my immediate family, but my mom's one of 11, right? And it's wow. a big Puerto Rican Filipino family, like huge, one of 11. And we have some traditions that, you know, are just so us. And I would not ever for the life of me, even though we're so different in so many ways, each of us, there's over a hundred mem family members in total, would never trade that for anything, right? What? So whether it's like a family or if it's like a job that you feel that you have that community and that connection with, or it's a product that you buy, we all have the opportunity to create a community that we love and want to invest more energy and time in. And well, I, yeah. I 100 percent agree. I'm you know, now that you say that, because I didn't know that about your family. Like, do you find that a lot of the lessons, the things that you sort of tried and true apply to community building with strangers, you actually have learned? Because 100 people like what are your what are your family reunions like? Where do you even go? You have to rent out a venue. <laughs> So yeah, our family reunions are number one, the best. That's how I'd fill in that blank. Um, they are, it literally is where, and you know, to answer your question, it literally is where I learned community building. Um, and what I mean by that is it's not just because we had a hundred family members. It's, it's because our family had the value that you are loved no matter what, no matter what. So we have people who have such different ideologies, right? Or are accepting of so many different things or like, well, my religion says this or my religion, like we, we, we have all of it. And on top of that, um, from a racial perspective, you have, you know, me on the lighter end of the spectrum all the way to very dark brown um, skin tone and everything in between. Um, and so I grew up in this space of like, you are, you come as you are and you are loved, which meant when, when friends uh, would come over, let's say I went to college near my parents, my, near my family. So when friends from college would come over uh, for Thanksgiving or for another holiday, they immediately were included and embraced into the family. Yep. So even to this day, my friends, you know, will say, how's your mom? How's your dad? How's your grandma? You know, and, and it really was this space of, we are who we are. We're crazy. We're really loud. We talk over. <laughs> you can never get a word in. You can never finish a story. And in all of that, there's so much goodness, right? And so I remember going into the real world, into life, and suddenly feeling like for the first time when I got to college, um, that all of a sudden I was an outsider. Uh, I said, so? Get in. How so? <laughs> because because you found that like most people outside of your family, like didn't, didn't have those same views, didn't, weren't that accepting. Yeah. Yeah. I just honestly, because of such, I mean, part of the blessing and the curse of having a big family is you don't really know a lot of people outside of your family. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I did, I was, I was like this, I'm known as the social one in my family. So I did, but you know what I mean? I was still in my bubble. And so leaving the house, going into college, I, for the first time, I thought I was just like everybody else. I was walking into college ready to, you know, to like learn all the things. And the first day I was there, I was with my best friend who soon became my best friend, Carissa. And she's half Honduran, and half Irish. And here I am, Filipino, Puerto Rican, um, Spanish, right? 
And we walk in and a friend of ours who's living on the first floor calls us, you know, later that night and, um, and says, Hey, yeah, I had the craziest situation. These, these individuals that were playing pool totally were knocking on you and Carissa for, for being, you know, people of color. Different. Like different. Right. And I was like, wait, what? Like, totally didn't get it. I had no concept of what this was, this, this idea of identity. And the long and the short of it is I literally en engaged myself and my life, which now obviously is like 22 years later, in this conversation about identity and about who we are as leaders and how do we choose to show up intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, we're each given our own blueprint. We're all wired in different ways. We were not like, hmm, how am I gonna, like, who do I want to be God or higher power or whatever? Like, right. We're given our own, we have no idea who we're coming into this planet to become, but here we are. And it's now an opportunity for us, each of us, to invite ourselves into our leadership and into our voices and into the goodness that we are to bring more good into the world. Is how 100, I yeah, 100%. I mean, because everybody has, everybody that that tries to create a product or service, they have the yeah. best intentions, yeah. right? They, they really do. But yeah. where is it, do you think, that people kind of go astray? Like, is it a situation where, um, you know, instead of, instead of, you seem like a very, like, person first attitude, right? Mm -hmm. Like, understand the people first, and then you can start to create things that they will naturally gravitate to. Right. As exactly. opposed to, you know, the other way that you could do it where you create a solution and then you say to yourself, all right, now I gotta go and find a bunch of people that fit this mold, right? right. Into what, so do you think it is that most, that a lot of people do the latter and, it's, yeah. and it doesn't quite work as well? Well, I mean, it, it goes back to that old adage, you know, you put the, the, the sign up on your, what is it? The sign up on your shingle on your door and the business will come, right? It's always, that's kind of the mindset. Like when people think about creating a business, they think, oh, I'm just, I'm supposed to, here's my widget or here's my, here's my idea or here's my service or here's my whatever. And, and then because it's so good, the people will just naturally come. But the truth is, it's like, I, I imagine us all in like a very large market, of goods and services and we're flinging them you know it's i don't know if you've ever been to it, like one of those large you know like farmers markets or I was like just there with my mom like a couple of weeks ago in cleveland there's like a big one in cleveland and everybody had masks on and stuff but there was just people screaming it was like a bazaar you know exactly and you know i grew up in the philippines so like that was there's like huge ones as well and like you can't i mean if you're add like there's no way you will not <laughs> Um, but that's that's kind of how it is in our world as well today online, right? How many people are pitching a very similar thing to what you're doing, for example? The way in which you really begin to differentiate is number one is to is to flip that script. Number one, get to think of, get to thinking about who do you really love hanging out with? Like who feels so fun that if you had the chance to hang out with them all the time, you would be like a giddy little schoolboy, like. Hee! You know? <laughs> right. And so you begin to think from that perspective first. Yep. And so I'm I'm a I'm a big proponent of giving yourself full permission as the leader that you are of the company that you're building to get happy, like totally give yourself permission to be happy with who you work with. The money will show up. It's it's proven over and over again. And with that being said, then you message your 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 you know whatever your thing is to that person that makes you happy. My hope is that by doing that, it, number one, it's easier, right? You don't have to think too hard about what your message is. If we're thinking too hard, oftentimes we're either overthinking it or we're not wanting to. We're not resonating with the right person that we really want to work with. Yep. This needs to feel as if kind of like what you said before we jumped on. He's like, just imagine like you and I are at a bar and we're having a conversation. And I'm like, I like that. That's exactly the same vibe that you want to have with your ideal person. Meaning not like that you'd be necessarily at the bar with them, but that you're comfortable enough in, in how you're sharing the information that you can just, just have a conversation about yeah. what you're doing. Right. Yeah. And not have that like continual filter of, yeah. 
Am I saying the right thing? Am I not? Like, how do I, how am I gonna say this without offending them? Like you're, you're essentially architecting that in your mind while you're having to converse with this person. And it, most of the time, man, it just does not work at all. Good. It doesn't feel good at all. I remember the first time I went into this own process for myself because I have not always been this way. I've definitely built communities out of that much more formal, like, well, let me let me help you understand the retention rates of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I remember the first time though, this was um actually, it wasn't too long ago. And I gave myself full permission to just be Marusha, which can be really quirky. I make a lot of faces. I didn't realize I did before. Um, but you know, I just, I just let myself, just like I'm having a conversation with you using my hands and like being a lot more engaged with it. What came out of that was insane. Number one, I was more, I was much happier. Number two, that particular client had a, he was doing about 2 million in revenue per month. And with that being said, they also had a 27% refund rate, right? So normally, I mean, that's a pretty serious thing. Yeah. I mean, only is it like you're losing a ton of money and that feels scary in and of itself. Um, and you don't know why, right? You think your product's great. You don't know why. But also your your payment processing can literally get shut down because of that, right? Like that is a high refund rate. So, so with that being said, you know, I could have come in like, okay, we need to diagnose this and try to pretend like I'm a doctor or something. What I did instead is like, no, okay, guys, let's get let's get on this. Let's figure out where the issues are. Let's patch up these holes. Like that's step one. And then we can actually build the community we want. But me modeling showing up as I was allowed them to get creative and see what else was possible. So I'm sharing that because we ended up taking that refund rate from 27% to 5.5% two months later. No way. Look at that. But it, I, I realized when I was reflecting on that, it wasn't all just strategy. It was also giving myself full permission as a leader that I am in this community build to fully show up because me and my goofiness and my create, you know, my the way in which I do the things, it creates the space for other people to also let loose a bit. Yes. And so that felt really fun. That was like an awareness for me of like, oh wow, I really matter to this. Like, it's not just me teaching a tactic. It really is also giving myself permission to help other people get out of their own box. Oh, wow. And, and you know, as you found out like that about yourself, do you feel like that same sense of people are attracted to that kind of energy when you just, you're just expressing yourself and you talk with your hands and everybody's having a great time. Yeah. It's that permission like with that small community of people, of business owners, or like, you know, the team essentially, right? It's the same when you're creating a larger community of people right. where if you try to do it in a very prescribed, formulaic, scientific way, mm -hmm. chances are it's probably gonna crash and burn. But if you are just yourself, right? One, it takes a lot of the pressure off, uh, unless you're a complete weirdo, like a complete weirdo, and then, and then you're hopeless. No, uh, but but no, but then um, you need everyone though, Josh. That's I true. That is true. That is true. Uh, but two, because it takes the pressure off, mm -hmm. you you are yourself. You attract people that vibe with that, and you repel essentially people that that don't. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's not like a. It's not like a rejection yeah. you know it's it's yeah. more of a it's more of a strategic attraction that's a great way to put it that's a great way to put it i think i think a lot of times we forget that we just as we want the best for everybody else we can have the best for ourselves the best for ourselves and so giving ourselves the best can start today with showing up as you are right because there is a community for everybody um, there was an accountant I worked with in 2011 and he was an accountant. Like he was like, he always had his like necktie, like really, you know, everything was like super buttoned up and, and he had the glass. He was like the perfect stereotypical accountant in Houston. Right. And he was just, he came to me with this idea, like, what if I was able to like get more clients? And I was like, that's a cool, I like that idea. Let's get more clients. And he's like, okay. And then I, so I started asking questions like, well, what makes you happy? And he goes, and he kind of gave me this look like, 
I really love playing the guitar. And I was like, really? That's cool. Kind of like almost like whispers it. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, because it wasn't, yeah. in his, it wasn't in his box, right? It wasn't in his like, in his world of account, what accountants do. Oh, dude, if other accountants found out about that, they'd completely ostracize him. He'd be kicked out of the, totally. kicked out of the group. He, in his mind, that was his fear. Like, who are, who are you, you know, who am I to be able to like find joy with my guitar? He also really loved wine, like really good wine. And he knew of this wine bar in town that really, that he would go to all the time. And they knew him by name. It's like his cheers, his version of like cheers, right? And so he would go to this wine bar. So I said, well, what if I'm like, just kind of playing with him, you know, playing this like idea with him. And I'm like, what if you gave yourself this full permission to be your crazy guitar playing, wine drinking accountant self? And he was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, like, as in you host, like a, I don't know, like host a networking event once a month at this wine bar and you're there as the accountant that's like entertaining everybody. And he was like, oh, really, you think so? All right, Josh, he tripled his sales in one month. He tripled no his clientele in one month because he was the host with the most. Like he was the one bringing people together for his party and he was being himself. He was really leaning in. And as he saw that people were really getting into what he was doing and they loved it and they were making some cool connections. He wasn't, he wasn't making any money on those connections or anything. He was just being himself, but they now saw him as the creator of this experience. And so they wanted to work with him because they started to trust him yep. because they brought him something that was really cool. And it wasn't a typical networking event where it was just like a business card event. He, you know, he had like karaoke, you know, he would like have like some karaoke stuff that, you know, or he'd play a certain song and they would sing, you know, just like fun things to kind of break them out of their own, you know, the, what networking community is supposed oh, to totally, be like. You know? Totally. Yeah. Like, I wonder, it makes me wonder once they saw, essentially got permission, you know, they saw they, yeah. that this guy, this accountant leading by example, playing the guitar, having a great time. Yeah. I wonder what kind of crazy likes and habits and stuff they started to like lean into, you yeah. know? One guy just raised his hand and he's like, man, I am really into making crochet cats like or something. And they're just like, do it, man. You know, and just, yeah, exactly. But that's the kind of stuff that's uh, that's so addictive and really makes people feel like they're part of something as opposed yeah. to just being on the outskirts outside looking in, subscribe to a yeah. service or a mantra or whatever. Totally. You've got it. Exactly. And so I think that's what we have to do is we, yes, we can use the systems that work, right? So we know networking groups work, for example, in that case, we know there's certain things that do work to help attract more business. But what if you could just like shift it even 10 degrees and make it you, right? Then you're going to find that your the right people in your community, like you said earlier, are going to be attracted. You're going to repel the ones that aren't meant for you, but you're going to be so much happier because yeah. you're with your people and not, not all those that really aren't meant to be served by you. Yep. I love it. Well, okay. So along those lines, right? One of the questions that I love to ask guests on the show, and by the way, before I actually pull this up, I just want to put this up there. By the way, if you were, if you were watching this and you were on the fire builders page, I guess apparently you have to give permission so that we can see your identity. Otherwise, you're just an avatar Facebook user. But whoever wrote this, I love you too. Yeah. Uh, also, let's see. We got Marusha is the best. Yes, uh -huh. she is. And apparently, weirdos do matter. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so let me retract my <laughs> statement that it's hopeless. It's not hopeless. There is hope. Uh, so, uh, so okay. So Marusha. So yeah. what I like to ask people on the show, right, is we're talking about making that tweak, right? You're talking about making that slight shift, attracting people, being yourself, uh, mm -hmm. attracting the right people strategically. Okay, mm -hmm. let's talk about how to do it now. Okay. If, there was, if there was essentially one thing, if you had to kind of distill it down, and to be honest, the way that I like to talk about this is if, if an eight-year-old kid came up to you and was like, Marusha, I want to build a community around whatever roblox okay got it that's my what, life by the way. What, yeah what would be what would be the first thing that you would tell them right mm -hmm. so if you could suggest that 
that somebody does one simple thing every day, but do it consistently, what would you suggest that they do? That's a great question. And I could answer that in a gazillion different ways. But the thing that comes up to, for me the fastest and the most oftentimes is, is basically to just start having that conversation regularly, daily. And what I mean by that is, so let's say you're building a Roblox community. This is perfect. I have a seven-year-old who is obsessed with Roblox. So let's say I was having a conversation with her and and she was like, mom, I want to have a Roblox community. What I would suggest to her is say, okay, great. So every day start sharing one thing that you learned in Roblox or like a cheat or uh, whatever, right? Like, oh, I learned this cheat. I don't know if that's a thing there, but you know what I mean? Like I learned this one thing or, hey, have you tried it this way? Or, oh my gosh, I used to do it this way, but now I'm doing it this way. And this is really cool, right? Every single day, just do one thing. It does not have to be complicated at all. And I think that's the number one thing that I hear is like, oh my gosh, I want to build a community, but like, oh, it feels so overwhelming and daunting to imagine myself like having to talk to them all the time when I'm really in building my business. I'm I'm wanting to be out there in front of all the people like speaking and doing all the things that are more outward focused instead of being like in the community and growing. So I feel yeah. like a lot of a lot of people are like afraid of it or uh, unsure how to do it in a way that feels sustainable. Um, and so what well, I can tell, you, I can tell yeah. you just from that point, right? Yeah. Like one of the reasons I feel like people don't feel like it's sustainable is because they they're under the impression that every piece of advice, every small little thing, the nuggets of wisdom, whatever they give yeah. has to be absolutely 100 percent life changing. Yeah. Right. That's and great. when you look at stuff like that, it's yeah, of course, it's almost impossible to maintain that yeah. sort of that that expectation that all of these things like you do it maybe once, maybe twice. And then after that, you're like, well, shit, now what the hell am I going to talk about? Like, what can I do to top that? Yeah. But I love what you're saying is that it doesn't have to be that way. It, it, have to be that it way. has just something small to, to incite the conversation, to be the catalyst, the crystallization seed to get people to talk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And yet still that can feel scary. And I get it because I've been there. I've been there. And in fact, that's part of why I created this process. I have it. We, we, in our company, we use this process called win, win, wink. And we do that because it really, each of those letters stands for, uh, for a type of post, right? And it's a 10 day cycle. So win three days, obviously win three days and then wink four days. So it's 10 days, 10 day cycle of the win, win, wink. And we have it broken down specifically that way because we know the difference the difference let me back up also here the difference between creating a community versus creating let's say a facebook page or an instagram account or whatever that's more outward focused like to everybody versus the community community in my opinion is different community is your inner it's your circle it's the crew that is hanging out with you in your container right so you have your audience which is being you know shared like right now i'm speaking to an audience right but if I was in my grow and monetize your group's Facebook group, it would be us in our little container and we get to like nerd out on things community. Right. So so with that being said, like it, the way in which I build community and, and have it sustained is to make sure that I'm doing one of four things. The first thing or W in win is uh, wisdom posts. So these are the kinds of posts that are inviting people to see you as an authority on your topic or as the authority that they should listen to on the topic, right? Then you have what I call the interconnect posts. These are your opportunity to show that you're a human too, you know, that or that your brand, let's say if you're a brand, it's more of like a brand, like a faceless, uh, non-personal brand. These are the types of posts where you're helping your end user like know that you care about them because maybe as one of the leaders of the community or yet yeah, or the you know leaders of the company you have had these experiences like them or a team member has had experiences like like them on whatever so okay. like in our roblox example yeah. for yeah. instance you could you could you know post a picture of uh, you where your like computer shut down and you're all frowny face and you're just like oh, i hate when the power goes out and i'm right in the middle of a game and i lose all of my stuff and you know, I forget to save or whatever, just something to relate. Totally. That's perfect. Exactly. Um, yeah. 
or it could be even like, you know, when I first started Roblox, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I've learned a few things in the last two weeks of being on Roblox. So let me show you. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, so it's, it could be like sharing some mistakes. It could be sharing some wins and being like, but really coming at it from that space of heart. Like, I just had this win. This really means something to me because blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, or it's like, you know, sharing a story of how community was built because my family is all about community, right? Like that's a personal story for me to connect with, with someone else on that. So that's the kind of, so the eyes would be our interconnect and would be to, to nudge, right? These are our nudge posts, meaning a community isn't built just on a guru or the core, like the head, or even like a brand company, right? A community is built when you get messy, when humans get messy, meaning we, you and I are having a conversation. Now we see Brooke. I think that was Brooke. I see it in the comments here. Yeah, yeah. You know, Brooke comes in now is in the conversation. Now we're having a three way conversation. Oh, and then our friend Jose is like, Oh, Hey, wait a second. Hey guys, what's going on? And then we're all like, kind of now it's messy, right? Co community is messy. And so the content has to be where you as like the nudger, of the community or the host is inviting them to have a voice too. So nudge posts are inviting them like, hey, I see that you're an expert at something too. Or hey, can you give your your opinion on this? I'd love to see, I'd love to hear this from you. Tell me more, you know? And like a little, so a nudge to like allow them almost a, a like a safe, almost non-judgmental space to step up and kind of speak up a little bit. Totally, yeah. yeah. So let's go back to our Roblox example, right? So Isabella, my seven-year-old, might be like, hey, guys, here's some, you know, I've been sharing some cheats this week um, that I found so fun. What are yours? Tell me a little bit about what, what is like one really cool like hack or whatever they call it, you know, that you that you have um, you've learned this week. Right. And now yep. people are like, oh, let me tell you, you know, da, 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 da. yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm thinking. You know, that's what I mean by nudge posts. Um, and then you'll notice that we have that K post, right? And our wink yep. and always just one out of every 10 posts, right? And this is our keep going posts or, and it really stands for like giving yourself space to share something that's going on. Maybe it's like you're launching a webinar or you're launching, um, here's a product that you want to showcase or, Hey, I was just on this radio show or on this, you know, on a podcast or things like that. Right. So you can use that to like be promotional and to like keep keep the sales coming and, and such. But really, it's very, very intentional that it's only 10 percent of your 10 day cycle. Um, and the reason for that is because community is really built. The way sales happen in community is really built on relationship. It's built on the know, like and trust factor that you're building with the people in your community. And it doesn't matter if it's a personal brand or if it's like a faceless brand. It is all about relationship. That's the whole point of community. So we got to really keep that in mind and keep that balance in order to be able to create more sales, which again, feels so counterintuitive. Like, again, if we go back to the first question, like, hey, I have a widget. Let's sell the widget. Who's my person? It's, hey, who's my person? Who do I get to play with, have fun with, do life with, do work with? And then what do you need? Oh, you want these things. Oh, cool. Well, I just created the thing. That's awesome. You know? And then yeah. you get to share because you build that really cool connection with them already. You get to share that. You have permission to share that with them. And and this these Ks are giving you permission to do a direct message to them. Now, well, what's, what's interesting yeah. about the K part, right? Is that if you do the win part yeah. like correctly, if you if you do it effectively, mm -hmm. then that gives you so much so many ideas and ways that you can that you can make your k post yeah. but do it in a way that everybody's going to really kind of like it's not going to be all pushy and hey do this and you know just just do you're going to love it kind of thing it's yeah. you you've understood the language you understand like the mirror the mirror copy of how people talk and so you can speak like that and everybody just seems to get along and it's way less um you know impact related it's way less like shock value when they're like oh my god marush is like asking me to buy something now you know or right. roblox you know so yes. so I, I dig it right yeah and that's exactly it like you're setting up your win your win posts in such a way 
that you're you're seeding you know your service or you're seeding your products or you're showcasing examples of how the product is in use right or you're highlighting somebody who's used your product before or you know what i mean so it's always selling but it's not selling it's not hard selling it's not feeling like that person that's constantly in your feed that's like hey today i have a sale go buy the thing and then tomorrow tomorrow's this is tomorrow's sale it's like oh my gosh right like none of us want that we don't want to be sold it's not about being sold it's about really creating connection and then from there if it feels aligned for that other person they'll say oh yeah this feels great let's go do that let's work together in this capacity 100 yeah. percent. okay so so mm. follow up yeah. follow up to this right so let's say that we do win win wink uh -huh. and it's a 10-day cycle mm -hmm. let's talk about 30 days so you do this for 30 mm -hmm. straight days yes in your experience of all of this the brands that you've helped and you've applied yeah. this sort of methodology tell me where you would imagine that people would end up after just a month? Ah, oh, great question. Love it. So what I found is this is exactly how every single one of the brands I've ever worked with has create have created an ongoing like lead generation process. So meaning lead lead to sale. So I actually, it's funny because I've been building these communities for forever, but I never had my own to talk about community building, for example, right? And so I actually, just in August of this year, I decided, you know what, maybe it's time to like build my own community. So we started with, you know, a hundred people in a community. We grew that community in a month um, organically because people knew this is something I'm passionate about uh, to 450 people. And then on top of that, we also found because of the posts and their, the regularity of the posts, we were able to create over $45,000 in sales in our first month. And so that's my personal example. But again, my clients are who, you know, maybe have lar even larger communities than I have, a lot larger communities than I have, are doing this regularly. Now, a lot of times people are like, well, I don't even have a community, right? Like I have an audience, like I'm on Instagram or I have a Facebook page. So what do I do with that? And I say, you know, first thing is just continue to nurture, use the win-win wink in that place, in that way. And then when you feel it's aligned to bring them into your safe container, um, then we can have that conversation about taking them there. But give yourself permission to just get comfortable with writing and getting your voice out there and getting comfortable, like practicing voice in a way that is more relational. Then and when that happens, you will be able to then invite them. So in 30 days, it either would be creating the community right then and there, or it would be already finding yourself that, oh, I already have that community. I can start now attracting more sales, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. I love, I love that. I love the like the example because because there are some people out there. I mean, I'm sure there are people listening right now that uh, that as you're talking about that, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's they're saying to themselves, I don't have, I don't have a community. I don't even know where to yeah. start. And, uh, and I think that you've made it pretty damn clear. And I love the win, win, wink is, uh, is that just start putting stuff out there in a, in a way that tries to encourage people to come back to uh, people to, uh, to, to say something, to, to yeah. comment, to, to, um, contribute in a meaningful way. And it doesn't have to be so meaningful that you like that it is just life changing. So there's not that pressure, but just just a little like micro um, interaction. Yeah. But you just but you compound that over win win wink. You know, over thirty days. Yeah. That's your your golden. Yeah. And uh, and this is what uh, this is what here. So check this out. Perian said, but your sale is a warm cup of wonderful smelling girlfriends across the table, loving the conversation coffee sale. Okay, <laughs> but I, I feel like what she's trying to say is, uh, is that the sale itself, if we're, if we're talking about coffee, um, yeah. is like that. You know, it's this, yeah. it's this nice, pleasant experience as opposed to this jarring, like wake up with a hangover kind of experience. 100%. And honestly, part I remember getting into this conversation around community when I was building uh, Perky Perky, my coffee company, and just imagining I would like have this visualization of like, 
what would it look like? What would be like my most favorite thing while I'm selling coffee, you know, via Amazon and through our website, it would be that this cup of coffee, this, this bag of coffee, this bag of perky perky coffee would be sitting on a countertop where girlfriends are able to just be together and just have that moment. And in fact, part of, we created a community called around the cup, um, hashtag around the cup uh, on Facebook for that reason to have like virtual girlfriend time. Right. But the truth is that's really that like a sale doesn't have to feel scary. It doesn't have to feel intimidating. It literally, if you, if you create a company with the intention that, Hey, I'm going to be with people I can't wait to hang out with that bring me joy that lift me up as I lift them up, man, that is the foundation for everything. And then from there, the community and the way in which you speak to them, it just, it flows. It just really does. Um, and so, you know, when people ask me how, where do I want to, where do I go with this? It's, you know, I guess the other thing I would say is if they're not yet doing that in the next 30 days, just do that. Just get yeah. comfortable with your own voice and like really visualize what would it look like at the end of December of 2020 to be surrounded by all your cool people, <laughs> even if it's yeah. just cool for now, you know, um, that, that is, that is in our power to do that. Yes. I love it. And you're right about the practice too. You know, the expectation that you'll know exactly what to say and how to say it, you know, it shouldn't really be there. It'll take practice to kind of find that your own voice, which, uh, which I think is great because, because not only is it helping to attract the right people, but it's also helping you to like self articulate what you're about, you know, maybe say, put words to things and feelings that you didn't even know you really had or you had, and you just kind of had in the back of your mind. It just helps to, uh, you know, to, to get those out there in the world. And then I guess there's n- really no better feeling than having those things validated by really other cool people. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, I dig it. it. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Well, so Marusha, this has been amazing. So tell mm-hmm. everybody, right. They want to connect with you. You've built this community about community building yeah. um, and you have perky perky. You have around the cup. Yeah. How do people uh, continue the conversation with you? Sure. Great question. Um, so honestly, so there's a few different ways. Obviously, if you want perky, perky coffee, you want to try it out. I'd love that. So just go to perkyperky.com and we do 20% off coupon for everyone that's a new customer. So you just will sign up, the coupon will spit out to you over email, and then you can utilize that for your coffee. Um, if you're interested in building community and want to see how community is being built in its in the process of it, feel free to check us out here on Facebook. It's called Grow and Monetize Your Groups for Changemaker Entrepreneurs. I know it's a long title. There's a reason for that. We can go into that. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so there's there's that. Um, I also have, I know Win Win Wink sounds, it's like, oh, that's so helpful. And also sometimes there's people come to me and they're like, yeah, but now what do I write? <laughs> like, great wisdom post, but like, huh? Oh, <laughs> What yeah. are the so what I've actually done is I've pulled together 300 content prompts for win, win, wink, meaning like if you need a wisdom post and you're like, I have no idea what's right. You can literally go down my list and you can just close your eyes. Go, Today I'm going to write beep, and then you just point at the whatever it is. And then that's your prompt and you go and write on that. Right. So um, that's for free. Um, I have, I've put that all together. It's at um, uh, createcellimpact.com forward slash content prompts. That's yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And actually that link is also available in the description. So if you're watching this now live in the description itself, and if you're listening to this on a podcast, it will be in the show notes. So check that out. You'll be able to go right to that. And uh, that's inc- incredibly helpful because it, nothing's harder than trying to start on a blank page about what to, what to, what to write about, you know, just having that tiny little prompt is so helpful. I'm so glad. I I, honestly, it's been so much fun to put that together and, and to serve people on. And for many of my clients, they'll use this to create two years worth of content. I mean, that's how many posts we've got there. If you do five days a week of content, so you've got it, we can, and you know, I'd love to support every one of us on that. We all need, we all need to build these communities. They're pretty, they, they, they do change lives. Pretty dope. They're pretty dope. Yep. <laughs> I tell you, this has been such an amazing conversation. I knew that it was going to be anyway, just because you're mm-hmm. such a cool person. But honestly, it's uh, the kind of stuff that you were dropping today. Awesome. 
I, uh, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for your time. Let me get this banner out of the way. Um, I'm so thankful for you know your time today. Uh, if you had to leave people with one just parting piece of Marusha advice, what would it be? Mm. I think the one that's been most uh, in my awareness these days is you deserve happiness. You deserve it. You don't have to create a business or do a life that doesn't feel alive to you. We've got this one life to live, so let's go do it well. Let's yes. do it in our own weird ways. <laughs> And I feel like part of like Perky Perky is all about that. And let me let me put this up because uh, mm -hmm. uh, super inspiring Perky Perky. So honestly, uh, I encourage everybody to check out that site and uh, and what Marusha has built. Again, Marusha, you're amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. This was such a pleasure to be here. Yes, well, I appreciate it. And uh, and so guys, that wraps up another episode of fire builders live you can catch us streaming live monday through saturday every day six days a week right here on my facebook channel it's also a podcast you can check that out if you want to be part of the show and support it just go to firebuilderslive.com and man we've got episodes from season one now season two we've got great guests like marusha so that's it doing consistent things one day at a time marusha thanks again Thank you, Josh. Thanks so much for being for having me here. And thank you, everyone who joined us. This was so much fun to have you here. It has. It's been an awesome time. So, uh, so thanks again, guys. This is Josh and Marusha signing off another episode. We'll see you guys later. Bye.